Hey guys, today's video is going to be my yearly favorites of 2015. I tried to consolidate everything that was my absolute favorite. So I don't necessarily have something in every single category of makeup and beauty. For example, this year I didn't have a single favorite of blush and I don't have very many eyeshadow favorites, but I really wanted to concentrate on the very specific products that I really, really loved. I'm gonna get started with skincare and these are in no specific order, it's just how I pull things up. Uh, the first thing is my Cetaphil Moisturizing Cream. This is the moisturizer that I use morning and night or just any time during the day whenever I need a facial moisturizer. I've been using this for probably like four, maybe five years now and I'm open to trying new moisturizers but nothing ever beats this. It's great, especially if you're extra dry like me. Highly recommend, I just love this stuff so much. I definitely tried to be a little bit more proactive this year with anti-aging and I really tried to wear a sunscreen very regularly. I'm not perfect at wearing it every single day, but I'm getting better at it and I do want to be wearing sunscreen every day because it is super important. And I need to be wearing a physical sunscreen, not a chemical sunscreen. So the one I've been wearing is the Tarte, Tarte Guard SPF 30. I love this because it doesn't mess up my makeup. A lot of times with sunscreens, I find that if I put makeup on top of them, it makes the makeup apply splotchy and it can almost like change the colors and the oils in the sunscreen will kind of like break through the makeup, but I did not have that problem with this one. And the other thing that I really liked about it is it didn't make my skin look ashy or like it had like a weird white sheen to it, which is another problem that a lot of sunscreens have but not with this one. This is just all around a really, great, a really great sunscreen that I loved. My favorite fake tan of the year was the Fake Big Flawless Darker. I'm sure all of you guys could guess that. I talk about this all the time. I highly recommend this to everyone. When you purchase this, it comes in a box with a set of gloves and an application mitt, so you don't have to purchase them all separately, which is nice. It's not just the guide that's dark. When you rinse off the guide, you still are left with a really great olive skin tone. I put it on my face, it doesn't break me out. I don't think a fake tan can really get, get <laughs> much better than this one. So for hair care, you guys probably can already guess, my favorite shampoo and conditioner of the year was Matrix Sleek. Um, I buy the big salon bottles and I try to get them out of my shower but they're dripping and they're all wet and everything because I just showered. So I will link them down below, down below for you guys but I've showed them in so many videos. I highly recommend that especially to those of you who are just like me and have Asian texture hair. But my favorite dry shampoo of the year was the Amika Perk Up Dry Shampoo. Now I have black hair and this still doesn't leave a white cast in my hair. Of course if I apply it very close to the hairline I get a white cast but I typically apply my dry shampoo mm, like a foot away from my scalp so I don't get a white cast with this which I really appreciate. Smells great, doesn't make my hair feel heavy or filmy and it doesn't make my hair feel super dry which is a problem that I had with a lot of dry shampoos. I love this stuff so much. Another standout hair product for me this year was the Kenra Shine Spray. This is my third bottle of this. I love it so much. I spray it in my hair before I blow dry and it's almost as if it cuts blow drying time in half. It just makes hair blow dry so much faster. And then I spray it in my hair before I style it and then I spray it in my hair after I style it. After you style it and you spray this into your hair, it just puts this amazing brilliance into the hair. The hair is reflective and shiny and it's just just looks so healthy and great. So I absolutely love this stuff. When I'm spraying it in my hair, because I do spray it in my hair typically like three different times, I don't use a lot. I just use a little bit. A little bit of this goes a really long way. It's an amazing styling product. I've really been enjoying this this year. I also really enjoyed the wet brush this year. I am still a huge fan of the Tangle Teaser, but I like that this one has a traditional handle, and it's really important that you're using a special type of brush when your hair is wet, because that is when your hair is the most prone to snappage, but I also like to use this when my hair is dry. I just think that this is a really great hairbrush all around. Two favorite primers this year. The first one was by Glossier. It was their priming moisturizer. This is exactly what it's called. It is a priming moisturizer, which I want a moisturizer that's like hydrating and really sinks into the skin. This almost like 
plumps up your skin and it just makes it feel super hydrated and it does slightly mattify the skin and it does give the skin a good canvas to start putting foundation on top of. And then the other one that I really liked was from Too Faced. It was their Primed and Poreless Pure. This is like a traditional type of makeup primer where it's kind of like silicone-y and slippery but it's oil free and this is one of the only primers that's that type of consistency that I can stand to have all over my entire face because it doesn't make my skin feel suffocated. This definitely helps make your makeup last a whole lot longer and it helps prevent oil from breaking through the skin but it's not the most heavy duty but I don't really need something heavy duty day to day. My favorite foundation this year was again the Shoot Uwe Mara light bulb. For 2016 I'm gonna try some new foundation so don't worry but this, it's just like an ideal foundation for me. Uh, one layer gives me amazing coverage for every day, but the more you build this up, the dewier it looks, and it's dewy without being shiny, um, as in like reflective. It has like no pearlescence to it or anything. It's just a really great dewy skin-like finish. If you are Asian and you want to find a foundation that's going to be almost identical to your undertones, I highly suggest the Shoot Uwe Mara light bulb because the undertones are just absolutely perfect for Asians. The other favorite foundation that I tried was the Dior Star. I loved this because, again, it's a dewier foundation. I don't like mattifying foundations, but I really liked this because it's more of a satin finish, and I really loved the way it's set on the skin. You don't have to set it with a powder. You can set it with a powder, but I find I don't really have to set this with a powder ever, and it is amazingly beautiful in photographs and on camera. This is like the ideal foundation for any type of camera work. It looks so stunning. Doesn't have any white cast in flash photography or anything like that. It's just a really, really great foundation, and my preferred method of applying both of these is, of course, with the Beauty Blender. I really loved two illuminators this year. The first one was the Kogendo Aqua Illuminator in the shade Sheer Beige. This is just my favorite illuminator ever. It looks gorgeous on bare skin. Just a tiny drop of this, and your skin looks so healthy and beautiful, radiant, Amazing to mix in with your foundations and to even wear on top of foundation. This is just a really amazing illuminator. And the other one that I really liked that I just recently tried in November, but I've been loving just as much, is the Sephora Luminizing Drops. And this one is in the shade Morning Light. This is a little bit more concentrated than this one. Like this one is definitely like a lot more shiny if you really want like that wet highlight and glossy skin. These are amazing for doing that on top of foundation. Just don't set it with a powder. My favorite concealer this year for both under eyes and the face was Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. This was my favorite last year as well. I don't think a concealer can get any better than this. This tube that I have right here is in the shade Light, but I also love the shade Neutralizer and the shade Medium, depending on my skin tone. It doesn't migrate on the face. Even if I don't set it, it stays where I put it. It doesn't crease. It doesn't settle into fine lines. It doesn't change color or anything. It's just the best concealer ever. I will continue to repurchase this forever and it will always be my favorite. I almost don't even like want to try new concealers just because in my mind nothing can get better than this one. I had three facial sprays that I absolutely loved this year and the first one is just a staple in my makeup collection that I always have to have. It is Fix Plus by MAC. I love to do this before I apply my makeup. It's just a great thing to spray on your skin and my skin just drinks it up and absolutely loves it. It just makes makeup glide on. It's beautiful and then if you've perhaps been a little bit heavy handed with powder. This is amazing to just take away the chalkiness that powder can sometimes give to your skin when you apply a little bit too much. And it's just a great makeup refresher. If you feel like your makeup's looking a little bit dull and drab, then I do a couple sprays of this and it just brings life and that amazing skin-like quality back to your makeup. Another dewy setting spray that I absolutely fell in love with this year was the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. This is different from Fix Plus because Fix Plus is clear, but this actually has an ultra fine pearlescence in the spray, so it really does give your skin this 
beautiful sheen and it just it makes your makeup look so radiant it's absolutely gorgeous two sprays is all you need one even sometimes just one spray it really is something else it is the best luminizing skin facial spray that I have ever tried this is the small version and I am writing it out it's almost gone but I will be purchasing the full size of this as well as far as setting the face with powders, I had two favorites. The first one is Bare Minerals Original. This is also my favorite mineral foundation, so days when I don't want to wear liquid foundation, which is most of the time, I wear this. But it's also like my favorite, favorite, favorite setting powder for foundation. I love the way this makes the skin look radiant and healthy. It doesn't have a ton of coverage. It is buildable, but if you want to set your foundation with this, this isn't going to add like a whole another layer of coverage. It just sets foundation beautifully. And the other one that I really loved was from Cajendo, their light reflecting powder. This is, it looks like it has a little bit of uh, shade, like a little bit of color to it, but it doesn't put any coverage on the skin. It has like little light reflecting particles in it, but this is a little bit more mattifying. The Bare Minerals, I don't find this mattifies me. Helps make the makeup last longer and keeps products from migrating around the face. I really controlled myself and only picked three bronzers. It was hard. But uh, my favorite, which has been my favorite for years and years and years, is Casino by NARS. This is a gorgeous, true bronze shade. It's very warm and red. It's got a slight shimmer to it, so it blends out beautifully on the skin. Doesn't make you look muddy or anything like that. It's not my ideal contour shade, but to just bronze up your whole entire face and make it look like you actually were in the islands with a little bit of a sunburn under the tan, this is so great at mimicking that. Another one that I really loved that's a really nice warm brown as well is the High Dive from Bare Minerals. This one has a little bit stronger of a sheen than Casino, but I like that because it really does give like a really nice reflective catches the light type of bronze. So this is really beautiful as well. Last favorite bronzer was the Too Faced 16 Hour Wear Endless Summer Bronzer. It's a really long name. This is more of a mid-tone bronze, but I love this because even though it doesn't have a strong red undertone, it still has a really beautiful slight sheen to it. So again, I don't really like to bronze my face with anything that's really matte. And even though the shimmer in this is really, even, oh, sorry, my phone going off just like totally threw me off. Even though the shimmer in this is really fine, it still is one of those bronzers that just ever so slightly catches the light and is very, very, very flattering. My favorite highlighting powders, again this year, are going to go to Becca because I think that Becca highlighting powders are the absolute best. And again, Moon, I mean, uh, Opal, I am just hammering away at Opal, so beautiful, Moonstone, and then I recently purchased Champagne Pop, which broke for no apparent reason. I didn't drop it or anything, but it's shattered, so I do have to fix that. I mean, if you want an uber shiny highlight, all you have to do is apply a couple layers and you are like beamed up with these Becca highlighters. They are fantastic. They are amazing. I think that they are the best highlighting powders ever. I love them. I don't have anything bad to say about Becca highlighters. They are just so, so beautiful. The other powder highlights that I really loved were the Girlactic Face Glows. This one is in the shade Bronze, but the one that I really wanted to show you guys was the one in the shade Natural, but I can't find it. Uh, but these are really, really beautiful for a great soft focus highlight that you can layer up on the high points of your face, but also get away with wearing it all over your entire face because it's not too shiny or disco ball-y. They just give you like this amazing radiance. So really loved the Galactic Face Glows. My favorite eyeshadow palette this year was hands down the It Cosmetics Naturally Pretty Palette Volume 1. And when I first saw this, I was kind of like, meh it's not that great but it is so great once you put it on your eyes and you see the pigmentation the blendability and the finish of these shadows it's really really beautiful and it's a versatile palette I love it I just love it so much these are supposed to be matte shades but I don't think they're totally matte which I love because I like more of an in-between finish and I like that these aren't totally stark matte. I have just, I love this palette so much. It's what I am wearing all over my eyes today to do this smoky eye for this video. Gorgeous, really great shadows. I also fell in love with the Anastasia Single Shadows. I loved Fawn. This is an amazing defining and transition shade. 
I loved Peach Sorbet. This is a super shiny, reflective shade. It's just like so amazing. It's almost foiled. It's amazing. I love Peach Sorbet. Another one of my favorites was Surface of the Sun, which to me, this is like a peachy bronze shade, really beautiful against brown eyes. And I also really loved the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. A few of my favorites were Snake Bite. This is a really great shiny bronze. Um, famous light gold. This one is Melrose, which is a really great deep warm brown. And what did I, oh, I picked another warm brown. This is Bandit. You guys know what I like. I like neutrals, browns, golds, and I like them shiny. I had three favorite eyeliners this year. The first one was the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Eyeliner. Lasts a really long time, very black. I also was a huge fan of the nib. It's ultra fine, so you can get a really sharp wing. I loved the It Cosmetics No Tug Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. I have to use a gel liner type of product on my tight line and waterline, otherwise it just smudges, so really love this. Lasts until you take it off. And the other liquid liner that I was a huge fan of was the Revlon Color Stay Skinny. This is a really great eyeliner, but I find that I have less control over it, so that's why I prefer the Stila one over this one, but this one is also really great as well and has a really nice fine point, so I can make a really nice sharp wing with this one too. My favorite lash curler was the Shu Uemura. I have talked about this so many times, but if you have small, hooded, Asian eyes. I think the Shu Uemura Lash Curler is ideal for that type of eye shape like mine. It really gets every single lash, gives it a beautiful curved curl. It's not like a sharp, square looking curl, which a lot of lash curlers can do to my lashes. It's just hands down the best lash curler that I've ever tried. For false lashes, my favorites for day-to-day -day life, the KISS 03s. It doesn't get any better than these to me. I love the KISS 03. They are my favorite false lashes ever. Um, and then my favorite, like, more dramatic lashes were the Ardell Demi Wispies. Yes, the Ardell Demi Wispies. I like these better than the Salon Perfect ones because I find that these are more flattering to a smaller eye shape. I also really loved the Escudo false lashes. My favorites were the Escudo BFF. I don't have any. I went through two pairs of those and they lasted me like three months a pair and then they just started falling apart. But those are beautiful. They look like lash extensions. So highly recommend the Escudo BFF lash. And then my other favorites were Miss Dolly and uh, Lash Called Desire. And then this pair that I have right here, if I can show you guys, I have a random pair that I don't know what those are called. These are um, Big City Nights, which I've worn once and I really like. I love the Escudo lashes because they all look like lash extensions. They are just so beautiful, but I know that they're more expensive, but to recommend you guys one pair, Escudo BFF, amazing. And my favorite mascaras this year were both from the drugstore. It was Maybelline Lash Sensational, amazing at fanning and keeping the lash like curled and just giving it like this like really amazing almost false fanned false lash fanned effect <laughs> looks really great on my bottom lashes as well and i also really loved the l'oreal shocking extensions telescopic waterproof this one is really great for giving your lashes a ton of length and keeping them nice and separated it's what i've got on my uh, bottom lashes today and just a really great mascara. I like to wear these together because I find that this one doesn't give my lashes any curve or fanned out effect. I mean, it keeps them separated but doesn't fan them out, but this one is like really, really good at fanning out your lashes. My favorite brow products this year, it goes again to the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. Right now, because my hair is so dark, I'm wearing dark brown. When my hair is lighter, I prefer chocolate. Amazing brow pomade. You do have to practice with it because the first time you use it, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to give yourself cartoon eyebrows. You need to learn how to manipulate the product and really work with it for your personal brow tastes. And my favorite brow setting gel was the Glossier Boy Brow. This is so perfect. It gives your brows bushiness and texture without adding fibers. This is a flexible hold, but it keeps your brows in place. It's a really great brow pomade. I mean, brow gel. Glossier really outdid themselves with this one. Lip favorites, and I forced myself 
to only pick my absolute favorites. So, um, yeah, it was hard. Uh, my favorite lip pencils definitely goes to MAC lip pencils, and my favorite was Whirl. I do plan on doing a whole separate video on my favorite lip pencils just because I love lip pencils a lot, and you guys are always asking about my favorite lip pencils, but my favorite this year was Whirl. This is my third, third pencil of this, and it's already down to the nubbins. My favorite lipstick of the year was the MAC Whirl lipstick is what I'm wearing on my lips right now. It's matte, it's just the lipstick version of the lip pencil. Slightly less dry than the lip pencil. Love it, my favorite lipstick of the year. I really loved Buxom Dolly, full on lip pencil, full on lip lipstick in Dolly. This is also a really great mauve. Slightly lighter and a little bit dustier than Whirl. Whirl's a little bit more red and fleshy of a mauve and this is a little bit more dusty of a mauve. My favorite liquid lipstick of the year, this was super hard for me to do, but my favorite was Beeper from ColourPop. This is, again, a mauve, but it's just super flattering to my skin tone, so I love mauves. I love Beeper by ColourPop. It was, It is beautiful and my favorite liquid lipstick. My favorite lip gloss of the year was Buxom White Russian. Buxom lip glosses are my absolute favorite. This is my favorite of them all. It is a milky, nudie pink. It's absolutely gorgeous, and it has a nice cooling, plumping sensation. And then I also loved Gur by The Balm. This is a uh, mauve lip gloss, but it's really shiny, and it's got a nice amount of tint to it, so it defines the lips, and it still puts a little bit of color down, so absolutely loved this. And my last lip favorite of the year was Clinique Black Honey Almost Lipstick. This is a sheer lipstick and it's glossy it still lets your own lip color shine through so it looks really nice and natural you can apply it without a mirror because it's not going to be like crazy even though it looks crazy in the tube you can apply this without a mirror and it just gives your lips this like nice wine glossy stained look I also wanted to talk a little bit about my favorite brushes because I'm sure you guys have noticed in a lot of my tutorials I am a creature of habit and I use a lot of the same brushes over and over again just because I know what I like and I can find multiple ways to use one brush so I wanted to throw these in there and hands down my favorite applicator for I said that weird my favorite applicator for foundation and concealer was the beauty blender I recommend this to everyone I tell all my friends in person I'm like you need to get the beauty blender because it's the best they always ask me what my favorite foundation brushes are and I'm like dude the beauty blender is the way to go you use this when it's damp so you're gonna hold it under the faucet and squeeze it and then squeeze out all the excess water it gives you the most beautiful finish to your skin it's amazing for blending out concealer such an amazing tool the shape of it is ideal you can use this backside for your foundation and then it's got a little bit of a pointed tip to get all in the nooks and crannies of your face the other brush that i really loved for foundation application was by it cosmetics it is their heavenly luxe complexion brush this side I use for foundation, this side I use for concealer. It is ultra soft and it blends foundation and concealer beautifully. And I like that it's double ended because it's not like two separate brushes. I like to just hold it a little bit more at the back end and just, it really works the foundation into the skin. And because of the way, the well because of how soft the bristles are, it doesn't leave foundation strokes, which is a problem that I have with a lot of foundation brushes. Two more brushes from It Cosmetics that I really loved. I'm sure you guys have seen this one a ton. This is their Wand Ball Powder Brush. This is my ideal brush for applying bronzer. I love the shape of it. It's great for like getting a little bit more concentration with the top of the brush. And then because it's like round shaped, it just diffuses everything. It's great for bronzing the entire face. Absolutely love this. It's also really great if you want to, well, I'd have to wash it before I apply a face powder with it, but it sets face powder beautifully as well because it doesn't pick up too much product and it doesn't concentrate anything in the bristles. It's just a really great like airbrush type of effect on a brush. And then I also really love this brush from It Cosmetics which doesn't have a name but this is my favorite for applying loose powders to set the face just because 
you can like tap it on and I loved the MB 112 from Morphe for me this was ideal for setting the under eyes because this is such a dense bristled brush it really picks up a ton of powder and you can really you know concentrate it on the under eye areas because of the way it's shaped so I really loved this for setting the under eyes um, another one that I really loved was the Jenny Pattenkin cheek brush it's a very loose bristled brush and like I said, I don't really like blush, so um, this picks up just the tiniest amount of product and really gives you just like a soft wash of blush color. It also applies highlight really beautifully. Love this one. It's also ultra soft. This is the Sedona Lace FB03. It's like a tulip shaped brush and I surprisingly really started liking this to apply my highlight because it gives more of like a soft focus effect for highlight. So you don't get like a super, you know, concentrated line or anything and you can apply highlight all over the entire face and it just diffuses it over the skin so beautifully, doesn't pick up too much product and it's great for just like blending out that highlight. And all around my favorite brushes had to go to Zoeva brushes. Some of these are dirty because I used them. Um, I really liked the Zoeva Luxe Sheer Cheek 127, great for contouring. And then my favorite eye brushes were the 230 Lux Pencil, the 227 Lux Soft Definer, and the 231 Lux Petite Crease. Alright guys, so those were all of my favorites for the year of 2015. I hope that you found this video helpful, informative. I hope that you found some products that you're interested in trying. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos all throughout 2015. Thank you for those of you who have been with me since the beginning. Thank you for those of you who joined me yesterday. Just thank you for watching my videos. You guys inspire me to keep making videos and to keep going on with this. I'm really excited for 2016 and I really do love the friendships that I form with you guys. And yeah, I really love this. This whole YouTube thing is a lot of fun. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will have my Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter all linked down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, guys.